Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Good evening. It is a blessing to meet with you on another great, loving occasion. Bible study. Amen. Bible lesson. Amen. Amen. It's the best lesson we could ever have. Let me give God thanks for you who are here. We pray for those who are not and those who are not able to be. Because we know our God is an awesome God. And we just want to give him the praise. Let us pray for just a moment. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Life, health, and strength, love, and your mercy, Lord. And your love and grace that abide over each and every one of us. Each and every day, moment, through the day you seen and unseen. We just thank you right now for those who are here. For those who are maybe watching us, Lord, who may be listening, those who may be loving what you say about you, Lord, we just pray for every single solitary soul tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have our lesson tonight. Israel rejects God as king. Our scripture lesson text is number one, outlining the background of the king, 1 Samuel 9, 1 through 2. And the second outline is the presentation of the king, 1 Samuel 10, 17 through 24. And the third outline, the beginning of the kingdom. First Samuel 10, 25 uh, through 26. Yeah. As we look at these scriptures, I, I want you to know there is no way on earth. If I live a thousand years, I couldn't cover every hour of thought, every smallest thought of what is to be said. But what is said, we want you to understand it to the best that of our ability, that God is giving us a message Amen. to know who he is and what we should do according to our knowledge of who he is. Mm -hmm. To the best of our ability. Amen. 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 Here we see the lesson. Israel rejects God as king. First out line, first Samuel 9, 1 and 2, it says, Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel and the son of Zerah, the son of Bechorath, the son of Abiel, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a charged young man and a good man. And there was not among the, among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Amen. We are looking at a background of the man that the children of Israel wanted to be their king. Now Israel already had the king of kings. Amen. 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 But they wanted a king they could put their hands on. Amen. They wanted a king that they physically could see. For what reason? To be that other nations. Yes. You ought to love who your king is. Amen. Amen. But you sure ought to love who your king is if he is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you ought not want no other person to replace Jesus to be what you want, to, want, want him to be. Mm -hmm. So they reject God as their theocratic king. For a monarch king. In other words, 
They wanted a king that they could see and feel and know that we're going to war and this king going to make everything all right. Mm -hmm. My God. If you got God as your king, you don't think everything can be made all right? God can make things right that's wrong in your sight. Yes. God can make things right not in a wall, but in a still, small minute. You know the scripture we read, be still and know that I am God. But we see here God choosing Israel a king from the smallest tribe of Israel, Benjamin. Benjamin, who was Jacob's youngest son of the 12 tribes. He could have chosen him from any other tribe. But this tribe was one of the most powerful tribes. So we see they had a young man named Kish, who had a son named Saul. And if you look at the scripture, you'll say he was a choice young man. He looked good. He was tall and handsome. Broad shoulders. He, he had the king look. Uh, you know, it, it's like looking at an athlete. If he, if he runs, he, got, he should look like a run. If he plays football, he should look like a football player. You know, if he's a boxer, he should look like a boxer. Well, look like he gets you messed up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sometimes what look like might not be what it looks like. Amen. 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 So, so we have to be real careful, but at the same time, the background of Saul, he had an outstanding background because he came from an outstanding family. And this is the reason why Many parents today try to be as an outstanding, outgoing, sensible, and train their children to be the best that they possibly can be. And we know for ourselves that when we train them up, as the Bible teaches us, train up a child as he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. We should depart from the idea when they are grown up that we are still training them. Because they're supposed to know what they were taught, right? Amen. But at the same time, he had a great background. And any time you choose a leader, you ought not to be afraid to check out his background or her background mm -hmm. to find out where this person come from, what is this person doing, what is what are the credentials of this person. We need to always check out who we are going to have over us, to lead us. It's a good thing that we have presidents, mayors, judges. We have all kind of people in this world today we have to vote on. Well, we have to do background checks, right? Mm -hmm. Believe me, friends, you're never going to find that perfect leader. Amen. But everyone is going to make you think they're the most perfect mm -hmm. and the best that could ever live. Mm -hmm. If that was so, the first one that became your leader told you what he or she could do as the best, so we shouldn't have to be looking for another leader unless that leader died, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not so. That's why we should put God first yeah. and lead God first. Mm -hmm. Amen? Lead yeah. God first. And so, look at how they describe this man. Goodly person. And he was, he, his shoulders was upward. He was taller. You know, maybe standing, you know, all the little teachers, maybe seven almost, maybe eight feet tall, maybe in between seven and eight feet tall. You know, and the height sometimes make us see a person different than what we would see a person if a person is short. But sometimes short can be more powerful than Amen. 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 I, I, I seen some big trees fall. <laughs> Amen. 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 I heard somebody say the bigger you are, the harder you are. Right. You know, so we need to really be careful about looking at the situations and rejecting God for uh, a monarch king. I'm not saying we shouldn't have a president. We need a president. We need we need a, a leader of this nation. But we should put all of our faith Amen. and trust 
in God Amen. when you make a decision of surgery. Don't reject God. You know, you can reject God's leadership. Yes. And if the thought comes to mind is, are you rejecting God at the same time? But they didn't think so. But we are. When we do reject God's leadership, we are rejecting God. When God tells us to love our enemy, when God tells us to love those who despitefully use us, when God tells us to obey him, have no other gods before him, we, we need to really do that. And we need to do it from our hearts and not worry about what somebody else thinks because I'm serving God. I'm not serving man. God is the one who touched me this morning Amen. and woke me up this morning. My neighbor didn't come by and knock on my door and I got up. I got up because I opened my eyes when the Lord left me. And I'm going to give him praise for that for the rest of my life. Amen. But you see, we need leaders who are going to tell us the truth, right? Amen. But Samuel told Israel, your freedom is going to be taken. Amen. Politically, you're not going to really go where you think you're going. Amen. And, and there are times when you're going to be oppressed and depressed. You're going to be robbed of every good thing that you thought that you would ever have. Amen. 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 But yet at the same time, they said, but we want to be like other nations are. Stay where God is. Amen. If God has you in a position that you feel like you don't need to be in, pray about it. Amen. Ask God to give you some direction in life. So that, so that you can know that you are where God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. So our second outline is the presentation of the king. We see in uh, 1 Samuel 10, 17 through 24, we see Samuel called the people together unto the Lord of Mizpah and said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up, Israel, out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and them that oppress you and ye have this day rejected your God who himself saved you from out of all your adversities and your tribulations and ye have said unto him nay but set us a king over us now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. He wanted these Israelites to understand what God had done for them. He wanted them to understand God took it. God crossed you across the Red Sea. The Egyptians were behind you to kill you. And he opened up the sea and you walked through on dry land. Right. Somebody's grounding right now yes. in what they think they ought to be when they can be walking on dry land. Uh -huh. When they can be living a life of joy. Yes. <laughs> Friend, if you have Jesus in your heart the way you're supposed to, your highway is not just going to be smooth. You're going to have some rough places in it. But when you get to the rough places, all you got to say is Jesus. Amen. 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 And you'll forget about those rough places. Mm -hmm. You'll just about put them out of your mind because you are following the footsteps of Jesus to carry you over the rough places. Mm -hmm. We can say so much about that, but let's keep going. You don't want to be oppressed when you can be very impressed with what God is doing for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Sometimes we put frowns in our faces when we ought to be smiling. Amen. And understanding who gave us and who took care of us. And, and when Samuel calls all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. The smallest tribe of Israel. Why did they get the largest tribe? Because it's God's choice. You know, we need to let God's choice be God's choice. But you have to live a spiritual life. You have to know God. How can I know God? Reverend, through his word. Amen. 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 Read his word. You get closer to him. When you're looking in your Bible, visualize yourself looking in the face of God. 
Amen. Amen. I, I have more time now with uh, good morning with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm retired from public work and I can sit and have my tea and me and Jesus can have a ball. <laughs> we can have the best ball that could ever have been rolled. Amen. And I want you to know that it's, it's a blessing to know who Jesus is. Amen. Jesus is the only one can give you the best from the smallest. He called the smallest tribe. And when he had called the tribe of Benjamin, verse 21, to come here by their families, the family of Matri was taken, and Saul, the, the son of Kish, was taken, and when he when they sought him, he could not be found. Then mm -hmm. called a king and can't be found. Mm -hmm. My, my, my God. Now, don't you know most people, what are we, what are we looking at today? Let's look at what's going on today in our world. We've got a presidential election coming up. we got a mayor coming up, mayor election coming up in, in Houston and so forth. You've got these, all of these presentations and, and, and uh, celebrations and everything is about vote for me. I'll do this for you if you vote for me. i got to answer this problem. I can answer your problem here. And you know it's amazing how people can get in a particular position to answer your problem and fall short. <laughs> let, let me say this though. When you tell God about your problems, your problem just got solved. Yeah. But you got to see it though. Yeah. Amen. You know, you, you know, but I can't, but I can't. No, you, maybe you're not looking properly. Maybe you're not looking spiritually because naturally, see the Bible, Bible teaches us that the natural man mm -hmm. cannot perceive the spiritual things of God. Right. If you're thinking worldly, 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 you can't Drop your 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 your, your water nets. You can't drop your fishing net. You can't drop nothing that you have. The disciples of Jesus had to drop what they was doing in order to follow him to know who he was. Peter had to find out by walking with Jesus all those years, and he saw Jesus coming on the water, and the Lord bid me to come. Amen. And when he told Peter to come, he did go, but at the same time, when Peter, when well, he took his eyes off Jesus, yes. and when you take your eyes off Jesus, you can't do nothing but what? Sing. Sing. Yes. Hey, then keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm not telling you to disobey your supervisor or whoever you work for, whoever you have working for you. You keep your eyes on what you're supposed to be doing, but keep your mind on the Lord. Yes. Yes. Down on your knees praying and getting up cussing. <laughs> you, 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 don't, 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 don't leave church. And go home and start throwing skillets and stuff at one another. Man, I had a friend once who told me, he said, he said, brother, he said, I worked the next day. He said, brother, I messed up. I said, what did you do, uh, Reverend? He said, well, I recognize everybody. <laughs> In the church, he said, but I forgot to recognize my wife, and you wouldn't believe what happened to me. I said, well, what happened, Reverend? He said, when I got home, man, she started throwing pots and things at me. Why you didn't recognize me? And he was trying to say, honey, I'm sorry. You know, we're only human, right? Yeah. We make mistakes. Yes. Amen. I've learned how to say, yes, man. Amen. No, man. Amen, amen. But my chest is still like a cycle on the box. <laughs>
even before we set out to move. Amen. He know whether we're going to stand under the pressure. Amen. He know whether we're going to fall under the pressure. Amen. And they found, listen, this, this is the scripture I, I want to really cap on. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord, Father, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he had hid himself among the stuff. Mm. I know some of y'all like, what stuff are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, the children of Israel, the tribes were called all together. They had to bring their baggages. They had to bring whatever they needed to, to, to survive or to talk about or to have at that time. And Saul was no doubt somewhere hiding behind all of the stuff that they brought. But at the same time, they eventually found Saul because Saul was out, if you read some more of the lesson, Saul was out looking for his father's donkeys. Amen. Amen. And eventually Samuel met up with him. Amen. Amen. And, and the scripture said, and they ran and fetched him this, and when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said unto the people, See, ye him whom the Lord has chosen, and there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. God save the king. And I'm sure Saul stood there, tall, handsome, strong looking, broad shoulders. Amen. But when Saul was called king, Saul didn't act like he was called king. Saul went back to home. Amen? Amen. He went back to his regular duties. Mm. Amen. Amen. Uh, what presidents? <laughs> Amen. He's going to be called to be president and go back to his office and sit down and say, you know, but well, I'm president now. I'm through. <laughs> you better get to work. Yeah. You got some, when you are called to be a leader, mm -hmm. amen, not not in your kingdom, but in God's kingdom. Right. Yes. We are called to work. We are saved. Not because we work. We work because we are saved. Amen. 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 No, no, no church can get to God by faith unless faith is exemplified through works. Amen. Abraham heard God, but Abraham had to move out after he heard God. And to move out of your own home, amen, and your own home is what provided for you, is uh, Abraham had to leave and go places that he had never dreamed of going. But he left according to his faith in God. And we have to stand according to his faith in God. And Samuel said unto all the people, see ye him whom the Lord has chosen. The Lord choose you when it and only if, and if, and only if, I say, but I know it's going to happen one day. I'm going to leave you. Amen. 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 Make sure it's the Lord through you call who is to be the leader over you. Amen. Be sure you thoroughly know something as much as you can know about that person who may be your leader. Amen? Amen. 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 So, we see here that Samuel told the people, verse 25, the manner of the kingdom, they, and wrote it in a book, and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. That last phrase mm -hmm. got me. Amen. God must touch the heart who is going to lead his people. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you will know if God has touched that person's heart. Amen. From what? From his or uh, her actions. Amen. From how they love God. You see, there was no greater love than God. Amen. God loved us before we was formed in our mother's womb. Yes. Yes. And so we see here that this young man went about his own 
business took men who was touched by God. No army, no military strategy was developed. They were just men who went with God. And I love the idea of what Samuel did. He wrote down, he stripped everything about what Israel was supposed to do. We call them today laws and bylaws, amen, in the church. How we should carry ourselves in the body of Christ as a physical body in church as well as a spiritual body in church. Christians just don't act like they are not Christians. Christians supposed to act like a Christian supposed to act without a parent sitting on its shoulder saying, uh-uh. If by chance you do have a parent <laughs> on your shoulder, let it be Jesus. Amen. 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 When you get up in the morning, say good morning to Jesus. Amen. And I know you are there. Yes. Or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I know you're there, and I know you're going to direct me today. I know you're going to show me today, and I know you're going to carry me today over whatever I need to do. You're going to be right there for me today. You're not. You're going to hold the words that I want to say back, and you're going to help me say the words that I need to say. You're going to let me go like I need to go, and you're going to direct me in the way I go. You're going to show me danger, seen and unseen, and those that I can't see, you are going to take me around, and maybe later you might show, you could, can show me where I, I would have been if I had not listened to you. Don't you know when you listen to God, he'll always show up? Yes, and, and some people use the phrase out of the show out, but I don't know if God had a personality of showing out. Because who God is, you take him who he is. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't take him for nothing less or nothing more because God is going to be who God is going to be. And that's why we need to understand this lesson in rejecting God. You are rejecting a real, wholehearted, wonderful life. You are rejecting the best life that you could ever have. I did. I was guilty. I didn't hate God. I, I, I couldn't say I love God like I should have. But I respected God, but I, I didn't want God to be in my company if I was doing something wrong. Right. 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 You, you, somebody didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't want God to be in my company when I was doing something wrong. But guess what? I didn't have sense enough to understand God was in my company and I didn't realize it. God was watching over me and I didn't know it. Yes. God was making that step that was going, that was going to be dangerous. He made that step shorter for me to make to keep me from making that mistake. My God, my God is too good to me to let me fall short of his blessing. I want to wake up knowing I'm rich in blessing. You know, material things are good. We know that. And it's good to feel good. See, when the first thing I do when I get up, I ask my wife, how do you feel? Amen. When we was young and married, we just jumped up and went to work. <laughs> Amen. We was trying to raise children. Yeah. We was trying to keep bread on the table. We was yeah. trying to keep food. We was trying to keep a chef. We were trying to keep an automobile. We was trying to keep clothing on the shop. We was trying to do everything we possibly can in our power. Yeah. But now that we know who God is, Mama. did you wake up with Jesus? Mama. Yeah. On your mind. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for another glorious and blessed moment. Yes. Thank you for being our King of Kings, yes. our Lord of Lords. Yes. Thank you for being there for us when we didn't even, sometime even now that we declare we are bona fide Christians, Lord, you are there when we don't even realize it. Yes. And we thank you for your presence you. right now. We thank you for walking with us. Lord, we may not have broad shoulders. We may not be seven feet tall. Lord, we may not be the best looking, but we thank you right now that you are yes. the best thing that could ever happen to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 And give God praise. Amen. Amen. Amen.